Hello and welcome to this fourth lecture. This one is for contrasts in one-way NOVA using R. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm assuming that you have watched lecture four already. Now one thing with contrasts, if you go back and watch lecture four, you'll discover that it really does depend upon the levels. Well, in a computer program, it also depends on how those levels are ordered. So you must always know the way that the levels are ordered. And in R, that tends to be, by default, it's going to be alphabetical order. Now we do need to load one package, and that one package is multicomp. Um, multicomp stands for multiple comparisons. Again, if you don't have it, then you're going to have to go over here to Packages, and Install, etc. Now we're going to deal with the meat data again, because we're hungry. So there's the meat data, same as it always has been. Copy and paste is fantastic, isn't it? Uh, we can do some summary statistics as we have in the past. Um, remember the, fun uh, the aggregate function, what it does is it takes your dependent variable, your numeric variable, and across each of the groupings defined by package, here it's going to calculate the mean. In other words, what this line does is it calculates the group means. These are the y bar i dots. And then the grand mean, which is the y bar dot dot, is just the mean of that dependent variable. And these numbers should look familiar. We've seen them at least once before. OK, once we got this, we'll go ahead and do the standard one-way analysis of variance modeling. Again, it's mod 1e. Function is AOV, dependent variable, tilde, independent variable. And we'll go ahead and do a summary of mod 1e. Probably should do an e instead of an r. There we go. And there's mod 1e. And I'm sure we've seen this analysis of variance table before. I mean, third, fourth time now. So it should all be familiar. And from the r companion, <coughs> uh, from lecture 3, we know how to get each of these values. And just to remind us, not that we're going to use them here, but just to s remind us how to do this, you're going to do summary mod E, then left bracket, left bracket, one right bracket, right bracket. And when you do that, you can specify any cell in this table. So if I want the sum of squared uh, for the between, that's row one, column two. So one comma two, control R. So that's the sum of squares between if we ever want that. And in the future, we will want something like that. So let's start with pre-planned pre contrasts. We'll start with L. And remember, L is always the contrast variable. It's going to equal 2 times the CO2 minus 1 times the mixed minus 1 times the plastic wrap uh, plus we don't care about the vacuum. In other words, what this started out as was the mu sub c, the, the population mean for the CO2, is equal to the average of the population means for the mixed and the plastic wrap. And what we did is we just solved this for 0 and set that equal to L. Now, we do notice something here. This is in alphabetical order. Why did I put that in alphabetical order? because by default R will order the levels in alphabetical order. I'm not going to write that yet. And we do need to make sure that our ordering matches ours. Our ordering matches the ordering done by the package R, the letter. Um, the function we're eventually going to use is GLHT. And GLHT comes from the Multicomp library. GLHT stands for General Linear Hypothesis Testing. And it's going to take the form of the function GLHT. Then you give it the model. And then you specify the contrasts. And there are several ways of specifying the contrast. The easiest 
I didn't say any of them were easy, but the easiest is to specify it in terms of a matrix. And by habit, I call this contrast ma matrix K. I'm not sure why. Just one of those habits. It's going to be equal to a matrix. And the first thing that you give a matrix is the numbers uh, brought together by C. And the numbers have to be in the same order. 2, then negative 1, then negative 1, then 0. Or does it? OK. And then we have to specify how the data is being inputted into this matrix. We just did it in by row. Oddly enough, by default, it's going to be by column. I don't know. And then we have to specify how many rows are represented by this matrix. Um, there's just one row. If we specify two rows, then we're talking about a matrix 2, negative 1, and then the second row would be negative 1, 0. This could actually be four rows as well. The first row would be a 2, the second row would be a negative 1, third row would be a negative 1, fourth row would be a 0. So it's ambiguous unless you specify the number of rows. So there's our contrast matrix. I guess that's why I use K, K for contrast. And I just ran it. Now if I want to double check, I'm going to look at this control R. And I'm going to make sure that the matrix is in there correctly. This 2 corresponds to the C, the negative 1 to the M, the negative 1 to the P, 0 to the V. Okay. And now, by the way, do, we do have one thing to change. We'll find out why in just a moment. Um, there's T, or let me do it this way. The function is GLHT. It requires two things. First thing it requires is the model, mod 1E. And the second thing it requires is this parameter called linfct. That stands for linear function. And this is where we give the, uh, the contrast matrix. Now we're going to run this, and we're going to see that we get the wrong answer. And when we did this on the board by hand, this was not the estimate that we got. So something is wrong here. And to find out what we did wrong, let's go back up here and do summary.lm. And what summary.lm does is it actually shows us what the levels in the con uh, what the yeah, what the levels are according to R. The first level is intercept. The second is mixed gases, the third is plastic wrap, the fourth is vacuum. And there's our problem. That first level is intercept. We when we were do writing these contrasts treated that first level as just the CO2. To fix this, or to alter it, or to give us the right answer, we're going to change that 2 into a 0. Because we don't want to include any of that intercept. Now, general result in R, unless you've run a, a means model, that first number is going to be a 0. Regardless of what that number is, this first number is going to be a 0. And that's really OK, because as long as we realize that number is always going to be a 0, we can figure out what that number is. Because we know that these four numbers have to eventually add up to 0. We know that what's blue here is going to be a 2, which corresponds to that. So R is able to backtrack and get the correct coefficient for that CO2 effect. But as far as we're concerned, we need to, tell, uh, to make that a 0. Got that? OK. So rerun that K matrix. Now we run the GLHT line. And we get the estimate that agrees with what we, what we already calculated. Um, uh, ignore the 1, double equals 0 right now. It's the default uh, label for that uh, contrast. And the estimate is 3.68, uh, which corresponds to a test statistic of, of uh, hmm, 
Yeah, and a p-value of, uh, yeah, it would be great if we could get that information. Here's how you do it. Instead of just glht, save it as a variable, perhaps t, and then do a summary of that t. And now we've got all the information that we, we want. Um, so that for that first contrast, the estimate is still 3.68. Standard error, which we never bothered to calculate because it's a lot of work. There's the test statistic, the t value. There's the p value corresponding to that. But I do want to emphasize that that's the adjusted p value. This has been adjusted using what's called the single step method. I would like to avoid adjusting. Um, here's why. Um, in R, it, it uh, adjusts by default. It has a lot of options for how to adjust. Um, but I would like, as a statistician, I would like to do the adjustment myself if I see fit. For instance, here, I don't want to adjust because this is my one and only test. There should be no adjustments made. So I want to do, I want to unadjust or, or to tell R, don't adjust for me. And so to stop the adjustment, we have to tell R, okay, I want the type of adjustment to be none. And we do that in the summary. And so it's summary of t, because t is the GLHT model, comma, and then test equal adjusted and type equals, quote, none. And now when we run that, in this case, it wouldn't make a difference because we only had one. You get everything the same, except now this p-value is guaranteed not to be adjusted. And again, I do want to emphasize that even though it used a single step method up here, there was only one test, so there was no associated adjustment. The t value is never going to change between these two. The only thing that gets adjusted is the p value. So even if you had five contrasts that you were testing at the same time, or two as in the next example, the only thing that's going to change is the p value. So this is how you would keep from adjusting the p value. And by default, in this class, I want you to not adjust. Okay, so that was the first pre-planned contrast. Let's go ahead and come up with two contrasts at the same time. Um, the first contrast is going to be negative 2c plus 1m plus 1p plus 0v. So in other words, this would be the average of m and p is equal to c. And then the second one is the average of c, m, and p is equal to v. And really, I could have made all of the, I could have made this a positive, in which case these would be negatives. Just want to see what this looks like. So let's create the contrast matrix. K is a matrix. And then give it the information. Now I'm going to do negative 2, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 0, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, negative 3 right now. And then I'm going to go back and remember, oh yeah, I've got to change the coefficients on the first to 0. Just as we had to change it here to 0, had to change it down here to 0. I also want to mention that this space here is completely optional, but it helps with me and my reading of this. And again, by row is true, equals true. And n row is equal to, well, now we've got two contrasts, so we've got two rows here. So I'm going to run that, make sure that everything matches up with what we expected. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 3. That works. And now we just psst, copy and paste. We just copy and paste because we're still doing it with mod 1e, and we've named the, the contrast matrix the same thing, so might as well control. K, and that just saves a lot of typing, and you've already noticed that I'm having trouble typing. So here we go. Uh, again, adjusted p-values, no adjustment made. These are the estimates. 
Notice that this estimate is negative 3.68 because we multiplied through by a negative sign, whereas the one up here was a positive because it, it was 2c instead of negative 2c. Otherwise, this contrast and this contrast are identical. Notice the standard error, 4814, 4814, identical. T value, 7645, negative 7645, because the T value is just the estimate divided by the standard error. And there's the P values. Now, notice what happens if I do not adjust the P values. We've got a single step method, and these are the adjusted using the st single step method, and that they both differ from here, and this p value differs from this one up here. Again, for this class, I want to make sure that you do not adjust unless I s state otherwise. Now, the third thing we covered in this section, or or in this lecture number four, was trend analysis. Um, it's when the dependent variable, I'm sorry, when the independent variable is ordinal instead of nominal. So let's go ahead and do a trend analysis, um, bring in the run data. Everything here should be familiar. You should be able to explain everything that's now highlighted. You probably should be able to do both of these by now. The aggregate function, the way that we're using it, especially with the mean, this is going to give us the y bar i dots, and this gives us the y bar dot dot. Okay, go ahead and uh, do model two. That's going to be analysis of variance. Pace is the dependent variable. Distance is the independent variable. We'll do a summary, p-values less than alpha. Therefore, not all the distances are the same in terms of their population means. So let's test for trends. There are four levels, 1.2 miles, 2.0 miles, 3.1 miles, and 6.2 miles. Since there are four levels, that means that we can test for trends up to third degree. So we can test for a linear trend, a quadratic trend, and a cubic trend. If we had five levels, then we could test up to a fourth degree polynomial, a quartic. So here's our contrast matrix. If we go in the back of the book and look at table um, uh, A6, table A6, the number of levels is 4, so we're looking at the t equals 4 column. So the linear, which corresponds to the x1 column, the linear is negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2. Now you, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3. And notice we changed that first one because this is r. We changed that first one to a 0. And the x2 column, which is the quadratic column, the second degree. It's 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And again, we change that first one to a 0 because this is r. And then the cubic, which is negative 1, 3, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 3, negative 3, 1. And again, we change that first to a 0. There's three contrasts. And again, we entered this in by row. So control r. Now let's take a look at this. Everything's in there the way we need it to be. I'm going to make one change to this. Um, when we only had one contrast, click over here. When, when we only had one contrast, the default was not a problem. When we had two contrasts, I could figure it out, um, but it didn't look cool. Now we've got three contrasts that we're running. I want to change this one comma and two comma and three comma to some name. And to do that, we're going to use the function row names. 
And this, by the way, is completely optional. It does make things a bit easier to read. Uh, so it's row names of whatever the matrix is. Here that matrix is K. And you're giving it three values, so you combine them with the C. And that first contrast is a linear contrast, so we'll call it linear. Second is a quadratic. So we're going to call it quadrat. I hope I spelled that correctly. And the last is cubic, so we're going to call it rubics. Oh, wait, no, we better call it cubic. And that's it. And we'll run that. And now we'll take a look at what k is. And now we can tell that that first refers to the linear trend, the second to the quadratic, and the third to the cubic. And that's going to carry through when we do that. Um, what are we going to do? I'm going to copy and paste. Oh, I don't want to get the K. I'm going to copy and paste up there, bring it down here, change it from mod 1E to mod 2, control R. Again, no adjustments. And now we've got it labeled over here, linear, quadratic, and cubic, so we aren't too confused. Um, again, P values. P value is uh, it's dependent upon the T value, and that test statistic is equal to the estimate divided by the standard error. So really no pr uh, nothing different here. Nothing too different. Again, not adjusted. So we do detect a linear trend. We do not detect a quadratic or cubic trend. Again, it P value less than alpha, therefore we did detect a linear trend. Let's look at this. Okay, so here's the pace, y axis versus distance, x axis. And we're able to definitely detect a linear trend. We were not able to detect a quadratic trend, even though from my eyes it looks like there may be. I wasn't, we weren't able to detect it. Uh, the p-value corresponding to that quadratic trend is 0 0.31, so that's much larger than alpha. And there's no cubic trend that we detected. So all we were able to detect here was a, a strong linear trend. And that's it for this R video. Um, we did contrasts. Here's some, let me review some of the more important parts. Um, the, uh, the library we want is uh, the multicomp. Again, you start by loading your data, getting to know it. Do a normal mod 1E or analysis of variance model. And we're looking at pre-planned pre contrast. So remember, the coefficients of any contrast must add up to 0. So what is now highlighted is what we would write on the board or on our paper or in our, our research paper. To do this analysis, we create a contrast matrix. We're going to call it K, just out of habit. It's a normal matrix that contains just the contrasts in a, in a row, one row per contrast. Since we got one contrast here, we got one row. And instead of doing 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, which matches the coefficients, I did 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, because R wants that first one to be 0 because for R, that first level is an intercept. And there's no intercept here. Once we've got our, our contrast matrix, we run the GLHT function, which takes the model and then the ma uh, contrast matrix. And then we do a summary on it, summary on that GLHT model. It will, by default, adjust. For this class, I do not want you to adjust. I want you to unadjust, I guess, uh, since by default it adjusts. Um, so until further notice, I want your adjustments to be type equals none. For one single contrast, that's not going to change anything. When you've got multiple contrasts, it will. Since we've got two contrasts here, the number of rows is 2. Again, the first in each of those two sets of, of four numbers is going to be 0. Again, GLHT, summary. Then the trend analysis from when we uh, 
looking at the running data now, trying to see if there is a trend in my running data versus distance. Nothing it really has changed except now I've got three contrasts. The first contrast corresponds to a linear contrast or a linear effect or a linear trend. The second is to a quadratic and the third is to a cubic. There's three contrasts, so n row equals three. Again, the first in each of those rows is a zero. I did introduce your ability, uh, show you how to name each of the rows. So instead of one, two, and three, we've got linear, quadratic, and cubic. That's helpful when you get to the to the uh, summary table. But once you've set up that contrast matrix, everything else looks the same. The GLHT function on the model and the contrast, then the summary with no adjustment, and then we looked at the at the graphic just to make sure that what we what are told us makes sense and there's definitely a linear trend even even I can see a linear trend here the quadratic I mean if someone told me there's a quadratic I could say yeah I see it it, it looks like this but I'm not sure I would say that there's a strong quadratic trend and R doesn't find one I mean the p-value is 0.313 so that's how you do this. Um, the key is the GLHT function and the contrast matrix. So hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself.